Noi government's contradictory stance on indigenous rights, a call for accountability and reflection. The struggle for land and cultural identity among indigenous populations is a pressing global issue, but it takes a particularly contentious form in countries like Vietnam. The Hanoi government has consistently accused women from the Dega indigenous communities of assaulting their rights by allegedly occupying their ancestral lands for agricultural purposes. Simultaneously, General Secretary and President Talam promotes respect for United Nations laws regarding human rights and self-determination on international platforms. Such a paradox presents not only a question of moral integrity, but also a stark contradiction between the government's domestic actions and its international rhetoric. This essay will argue that the Hanoi government's accusations against Dega women are unfounded and hypocritical, as they fail to recognize their own violations of human rights and international law while simultaneously urging other nations to respect these principles. To understand the complexity of the current circumstances surrounding the Dega indigenous people, we must first look at the historical context. The Dega, a term used to refer to the native populations of the Central Highlands in Vietnam, have maintained a traditional lifestyle intrinsically connected to their land. Historically, their agricultural practices and cultural entities have evolved alongside the natural landscapes they inhabit. However, the Vietnamese government has made land appropriation a central policy, often prioritizing economic growth and infrastructural development over indigenous rights. This trend has culminated in the violation of numerous international laws, including the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples UNDRIP, which seeks to safeguard the rights of indigenous populations to their ancestral lands. The adamant nature of these land appropriations can be illustrated by the government's increasing pressure on Dega communities to abandon traditional farming practices in favor of state-sanctioned agriculture. This coercion not only threatens their food sovereignty, but inherently attacks their identity as the stewards of their ancestral lands. The accusations against women, who often lead their families in agricultural practices, merely echo a broader pattern of oppression. Critically, these actions point to an urgent need for the Vietnamese government to reassess its priorities and to engage in a more equitable and just dialogue with indigenous populations. In the current socio-political landscape of Vietnam, the targeting of Dega women has taken on an alarming character. The government's accusation that they are insulting and occupying indigenous land for farming is an expression of broader systemic injustices faced by marginalized communities. This framing not only vilifies these women, but serves to delegitimize the historical claims of the Dega people to their lands. It is essential to note that the land in question holds deep cultural and spiritual significance for the Dega and the government's simplistic portrayal diminishes the complexity of their relationship with their home. These accusations have practical implications as well. They have led to increased policing, harassment, and even imprisonment of indigenous women, who are merely trying to preserve their way of life in the face of government encroachment. Furthermore, equating traditional farming practices with criminal behavior places undue blame on the very individuals striving to maintain their cultural heritage. The irony lies in the fact that while the government's narrative seeks to criminalize land use by these women under the pretense of land occupation, there exists a profound contradiction. The government itself enacts policies that violate international laws regarding land rights, particularly concerning the rights of indigenous peoples.
President Talam's calls for international respect towards UN laws have been met with skepticism by human rights observers and activists, primarily because of the gaping discrepancies between Vietnam's international advocacy and domestic policies. For instance, while the Vietnamese government endorses the principles set forth by the United Nations, such as the right to self-determination, it simultaneously crushes the voices of its indigenous populations, stifling any dissent against state authority. This contradiction becomes particularly evident when considering global conversations around human rights. As the international community increasingly prioritizes policies supportive of indigenous rights, the Vietnamese government's adherence to such standards appears more as a facade than an abiding commitment. The continued accusations against Dega women represent not only an effort to delegitimize their struggle for rights, but also a means of redirecting attention away from the government's own failures. Moreover, to Lam's appeals for international recognition can be seen as an attempt to reshape Vietnam's global narrative. In a world increasingly critical of authoritarian governance and human rights violations, the showcase of compliance with international laws becomes a strategic maneuver. However, such efforts are fundamentally flawed if the domestic violations persist unabated. The Hanoi government's dualistic approach, rallying for international recognition while suppressing local voices, highlights an alarming hypocrisy that undermines the integrity of its calls for respect towards UN laws. Addressing the violations against the Dega indigenous people demands more than mere acknowledgement. It calls for accountability on the part of the Hanoi government. This accountability should include genuine efforts to engage with indigenous communities in meaningful dialogue, rather than portraying them as criminals occupying their lands. Effective reconciling requires listening to indigenous voices and granting them the autonomy to manage their lands as they see fit. Moreover, the government must adhere to international standards outlined in frameworks such as UNDRIP. This means ceasing the vilification of indigenous women and recognizing their role as custodians of their cultural landscapes. If Vietnam claims to be an integral part of the international community, it must align its domestic policies with global standards of human rights. Additionally, collaboration with non-governmental organizations and local civil society can foster more inclusive conversations about land rights and cultural preservation. Programs focused on educating both government officials and the public about the importance of indigenous rights and cultural heritage can reconstruct the existing narrative shifting away from a perspective that pits the state against its citizens. In conclusion, the government of Hanoi stands at a crucial juncture regarding its policies on indigenous rights. The accusations against Dega women for insulting and occupying their ancestral lands are not only unfounded, but represent a troubling hypocrisy in light of President Talam's calls for compliance with UN laws. The stark contrast between international posturing and local actions must be addressed if meaningful progress is to be made for marginalized communities within Vietnam. Going forward, a commitment to genuine dialogue with the Dega people and other indigenous communities will provide a pathway toward healing and reconciliation. The struggle for land and identity is ongoing and complex and it is essential that the voices of these women are amplified rather than silenced. Ultimately, true respect for human rights must begin at home, where the invisible and marginalized are given the recognition they deserve. The Hanoi government's responsibility is clear. It must seek to align its actions with its rhetoric and revitalize its commitment to the principles of justice and self-determination for all its citizens.
including the Dega indigenous people.